In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the kingdom of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, John died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with him the eternal glory. Please join in singing, Here I Am, Lord, number 527.
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. 
reading from the letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David. Such is my gospel, for which I am suffering, even to the point of chains, like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I bear with everything for the sake of those who are chosen, so that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus, together with eternal glory. This saying is trustworthy. If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. If we persevere, we shall also reign with him. But if we deny him, he will deny us. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. The word of the Lord. Suddenly, and 
was all the more difficult because of the COVID protocols at the time. As you recall, in, uh, towards early January, where she went into Grand Falls ER on a Friday with a halo hernia, and then was transferred to St. Cloud. Then, at the end of that weekend on Sunday night, they were talking of sending her home, as uh, uh, she would be good enough to, to go home. And then on uh, Monday, as she was uh, laughing and, and talking uh, with others on the, on the phone, but, and then it was also on that day on Monday where she was diagnosed with COVID. On Tuesday, the very next day, where things took a, a turn for the worse and where uh, Joan was put on the ventilator as uh, she wasn't able to, to breathe on her own. And then just two days later on Thursday, uh, the ventilator was removed as uh, it was, she wasn't able to, to continue on with that. And on Saturday night where she passed away, and so just a little over a week, uh, eight days, that it went so fast. And because of COVID, and also as it was in, there was a winter storm in that time, as you recall, uh, as you know, none of the family could be there uh, at the hospital with her, as this was before vaccinations. It's always painful to lose your mother, your grandmother, your friend, but all the more because of the circumstances where you couldn't be with her in her final days. And, and maybe you didn't get a chance to say your final goodbyes to her and to tell her how much you loved her. So what are we supposed to do with all those thoughts and feelings that we have of, of uh, where maybe we didn't get a chance to say some of these things that we wanted to say to her, our final goodbyes, to share with her how much you loved her, what would we do with that? First, we just acknowledge it. And acknowledging what it is, the thoughts and the feelings, the desires that are, are arising in our hearts and our minds. And then, second, where we tell them to Jesus. We tell Jesus them uh, without filter because Jesus is the bridge between time and eternity and between life and death. And so, it's with that where we, we tell Jesus exactly what we want to, to tell uh, what we wanted to tell John, or what we do want to tell John. Those things that we never got a chance to say, um, to tell those to Jesus, and He's the bridge between time and eternity, between life and death, and where He can tell those to John. As uh, we believe that we are connected uh, to those who have died, where uh, we know we have a soul, an immortal soul. And so it's with that where um, where we go to Jesus, and, and, we, and we tell him um, exactly what we're thinking and feeling. Like sometimes uh, we're also, uh, we, we filter what we tell Jesus. We, we, we think that, like, oh, I'm not supposed to be thinking that way, or I'm not supposed to be feeling that towards God, or towards mom or grandma, or, and, and so we pretend that we're not. But the fact is that we already are, and so, when we tell those to Jesus, when we share that with Jesus, how we really are thinking, feeling, desiring, without filter, uh, then He can get us right where we're at, and where we don't have to go through it alone, where He can carry us through our, whatever it is that we're, we're experiencing at the time. And so, I encourage you to, to share with Jesus, to, to turn to Jesus, to go to Him, and uh, telling him everything that you want to tell your mom, your grandma, your your your, uh, your friend, and uh, as well as and, and uh, telling him the other things that are going on in your heart. As Jesus says, "Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest." And so Jesus desires; he, he cares about us in our situation. He loves us, and so just as when you love someone, it hurts to see someone whom you love suffer. Jesus. And it, it's the same way, where when it hurts for him to see us hurting. And so you matter. Well, your grief matters to him. He wants to, to know about it. He wants to comfort you in this time. As well as Mary, our Blessed Mother. Uh, she became our Heavenly Mother at the foot of the cross. When Jesus, uh, at, when he's on the cross, and he said, uh, Woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. Where Jesus gave Mary to us as our Heavenly Mother. And so this time, 
Likewise, where Mary is a good mother, she loves us so much that in our time of grief, where it hurts for her to see us hurting. And so maybe it's, uh, you feel more drawn to going, going to Mary. And, and so I encourage you, if that's the case, in going to Mary. Uh, she always leads us to Jesus, so, so Jesus doesn't have a problem with us uh, going to Mary. And, it, and as she stood at the foot of the cross, she saw her loved one die, and she knows the pain and the suffering of losing her loved one. The other thing, uh, it's important to be aware of Satan's voice. Uh, where Satan, uh, the evil one, well, sometimes he, he likes to attack whatever he can. And, and so uh, he's the father of lies. And so when we're praying and, and we're and to become aware of if it's of Satan, of the evil one that we reject it. So how does Satan talk? He likes to use the should. Like you should have done this or you should have done that. Um, and in these thoughts of self-condemnation, they're not of God. And so if you notice the different uh, thoughts like that, like you should have done this, this, and this, or you should have said this, this, and this, um, that's not of God. The evil one, that's how he appeals to attack us. He hates us. He wants to discourage us. He wants to, us to beat ourselves up because he hates us. And, uh, and so so through that, to be aware that that's not of God. And so we reject it because the truth of us free. Satan is the father of lies. And that's not how Jesus talks. And so but we hold on to um, turning to the Lord, pouring our hearts out to Jesus, to Mary, and um, or to God the Father, if you feel drawn to him, and um, in receiving their consolation. The other thing is that I, I firmly believe that Joan was not alone when she died. She, she wasn't alone. As well, back, back, I, I think... I'm very uh, convinced that Jesus, Mary, and Joseph are with her. As um, and we heard in the today's second reading, if we have died with him, we shall also live with him. Jesus was with Joan as um, she received the last rites on Thursday of, of that week, and where Jesus uh, was right there forgiving her and being, uh, loving her. And so, as we know, the sacrament of the sick includes the forgiveness of sins. Uh, in the right from the book of James, it says, Are there any who are sick among you? Let them send for the priests of the church. Let the priests pray over them, anoint them with oil. And those who are anointed, uh, who, their sins will be forgiven. So it's coming right from the scriptures. The anointing of the sick includes the forgiveness of sins. And so I firmly believe that Jesus was right there as through the power of the sacraments and that Jesus was truly present right there and that Mary was there because Mary is John's heavenly mother just as I mentioned before and so of course she would be there as, uh, as she was able to be present and comforting John in, in the, uh, right there in the hospital in St. Cloud and then lastly I firmly believe that Joseph was there why would I say that? Because Joseph is the patron saint of, of a blessed death. And Joan had a blessed death. Like as, a, as we pray to St. Joseph, asking him that we may have a blessed death, what does that mean? It's praying that we are able to, that we're ready. That we're ready to go uh, when, when we die. And Joan was ready to go. As she received the sacrament of anointing the sick, where she received the forgiveness of sins, and so she was ready to go, where she had received the sacraments and was ready uh, for judgment, where, where she was ready to meet her Lord and Maker. And so she uh, had a blessed death. Like that's what I hope for, is a, a blessed death that we're able to receive the sacraments in my final moments. And, um, and, and so, so it's with that where Joan had a blessed death. And so I'm convinced that, yeah, we're, we're, Joan was not alone. When she died, that Jesus, Mary, and Joseph were all there at her bedside, and um, and being there uh, as we couldn't be there, uh, but but they were, and so she was not alone. She had a blessed death. She was ready to, to meet her Lord and Maker, and so it still hurts. Like even that, that's comforting for us in knowing, like as we heard, if we have died with Him, we shall also live with Him. 
where Joan did die with Jesus. And so we believe that she will live with him. And so that gives us a hope. But even then, it still hurts, right? Because you love her. And Jesus says when Jesus went to the grave with Lazarus, he wept. Even though he knew that he was going to raise Lazarus in a few moments, even. But right there in the scripture, it says, and Jesus wept. Because it hurts to lose a loved one. It doesn't matter how old they are. It hurts to lose a loved one. It hurts to lose your mother, your grandmother, um, your friend. And, and so, so it's with that, then, um, that's where we, we turn to Jesus. We bring that to Him. It's okay to, to be sad. It's okay to cry. That's not, that's not, it's not any indictment against our faith, as even Jesus wept. It just means that we loved Him. And that's a good thing. And so we bring this uh, sadness to Jesus, we bring it to Mary, we share with Jesus what we want him to tell John, what, what we want to share with John, and uh, we believe in the communion of saints. We believe that we're still connected to all of those who have uh, gone before us, who are all those in heaven, all those in purgatory, we believe that we're still connected. And so we can uh, turn and in praying for Joan, as well as uh, in turning to her and, and telling her uh, what it is that you desire to share with her. Because we believe in community saints, we're still connected. And so today we give thanks to God for the gift of Joan's life. We give thanks to God for how much Jesus, Mary, and Joseph uh, love Joan. And, uh, and how Jesus uh, has pre uh, gave, provided for a blessed death for her. And uh, we ask Jesus then to, to bring Joan into his loving arms in heaven and to be here with us to remain until we can be reunited with her again. Let us now stand and bring before our Heavenly Father our needs and our needs for us. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For Joan, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that she may now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our sister Joan, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that she may be raised up on the last day. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For family and friends of our sister Joan, that they need, may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord will choose from our homes those he wants as priests, deacons, nuns, and sisters. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. That all people may have respect for human life, from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together in God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, Hear the prayers of the Redeemer Jesus Christ and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. 
Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ, and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Please join in singing, Be Not Afraid, number 549, we'll sing verses 1 and 3.
you're indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, be humbly before you. By the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. He gave you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink of it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of you. Forever. 
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our sister Joan may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Let's take a moment in silence and prayer for joy. Please join us singing our song of farewell on page 8 in your worship page.
In the car? In the car. Yeah, in the car.